Chapter 3, Van Dodge. In 1884, Van Herbert Dodge, William and Mary's son, took the reins from his father and became the second generation to run the inn. Four years later, he married Alice Stebbins, the principal of a local private school. Under Alice's daily supervision and Van's counsel and bookkeeping skills, the small inn expanded to a popular resort hotel. By 1888, the hotel was capable of holding 100 guests. Before he moved to the West Coast, Van's brother Charles planted a long line of maple trees that stood for years out in front of the hotel until 1999. Many of the first resort hotels were built for health reasons. In Europe, visits to towns such as Bath in England that had mineral springs were popular. It was believed that drinking and bathing in the mineral water was beneficial and could cure a number of ailments. Wealthy Americans continued the trend visiting places such as Newton Springs outside of Boston. Urban entrepreneurs started building lodgings for these visitors at the turn of the 19th century, and the first resort hotels were born. Although originally built in destination health spots, the development of inns into resort hotels because of their scenic location quickly became popular. Cultural movements such as Romanticism encouraged people's appreciation for nature and influenced the building of resort hotels and inns in areas such as New Hampshire's White Mountains. By the mid-1800s, the wealthy were establishing their identity through travel, and many would partake in the grand tour of the Northeast by staying at resort hotels referred to as grand old ladies. By necessity, resorts catered fully to guests, providing lodging, food, recreation, and entertainment. Events such as balls, lectures, hikes, and recitals allowed for a mingling of young men and women and resorts became widely recognized as places where parents could find eligible partners for their children. Unlike urban hotels where guests may only stay for days at a time, patrons of resort hotels would stay for weeks or months. Mountain View House was only open for the summer season, and often the same clientele returned each year. Guests would receive personal letters from the Dodgers before the season started, inquiring to their health and would they be staying that summer? And if so, would they like their usual room? The Industrial Revolution swept the country following the end of the Civil War. Increasing accessibility by railroads was a key factor in the success of resort hotels such as Mountain View House that flourished in the White Mountains in the late 1800s and early 1900s. By the 1890s, the main central railroad and the Concord and Montreal Railroad had lines passing through the town. Every day, six trains from Boston and two from New York brought passengers up to the White Mountains. The Boston and Maine Railroad also ran a line through town. Each railroad company had their own station in Whitefield, and two of them are still standing today. One is now the American Legion Building, and Dunkin' Donuts now occupies the Boston and Main Station. The proximity of the White Mountains to major East Coast cities made the trip by rail a comfortable adventure for the cream of society traveling in luxurious passenger cars pulled by powerful locomotives through the wilderness to their summer lodgings. When the guests arrived in Whitefield, they not only found a busy timber industry, but also a thriving retail community. Downtown clothing stores, apothecaries, and dry goods merchants proudly displayed their wares in the shop windows. By 1900, there was a greater concentration of resort hotels in the White Mountains than anywhere else in the nation. At any given time, more than 12,000 people could be accommodated in the area's many resorts, inns, and boarding houses. The regular trains meant even more guests, and in 1892, the Dodgers extended the West Wing. In 1897, the first golf magazine hit American newsstands and the public demand for it soared. The hotel opened a small golf course in 1900. On July 20th, 1889, Barnum and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth, came to town. The circus set up their tents on the fields of the Chase family farm. The whole menagerie, 
including elephants and zebras, arrive by train. Just like the lumber boom, the agriculture community in Whitefield rocketed. One of the largest farms belonged to Lewis Hazen, which stretched over 6,000 acres, located where Whitefield Airport is today. Lewis Hazen was a keen breeder of racehorses, and the farm housed a racetrack often visited by guests from the Mountain View House. The farm also hosted the first Coos County and Grafton County Fair, complete with exhibition halls. Under Van and Alice's supervision, many of the conveniences that we take for granted today were installed, including steam heating, electricity, and indoor plumbing. In 1906, the original 16-room extension was removed and the new East Wing built, ending at the present-day Dodge Parlor. In 1911, the third floor was added and the tower, conceived in the late Italian Revival style, was raised to its now signature 89 feet 8 inches. Even as the hotel grew from its status as a country inn to a destination resort, Mountain View House was still a working farm. It had been extended by 500 acres and contained stables capable of housing 20 horses. The farm was a vital factor in supplying milk, chickens, eggs, pork, fresh fruit, and vegetables to the hotel's kitchens. Sam Tan was in charge of running the farm and made sure the livestock were a priority by enforcing the rule that no golf was to be played on the back three holes of the course until all the hay had been gathered in. 